groovy ride. Want a lift? Hey! Okay, dude, let's see what that jalopy can do. What's a jalopy? <laughs> First off the line. Yeah, I'm sure they're feeling pretty silly right now. Hey guys, Zach Marsh here, and welcome back to Megas Month. So now that we're actually, uh, now that we're actually in the in the thick of it, we are now actually going to be starting reviewing Megas XLR today, and I am going to be talking about the first episode test drive, and uh, and uh, and and basically this just sets up the the quote unquote plot of the series, but uh, but basically what this episode sets up is how the is how is how Coop found Megas and ex and explains how he actually wound up becoming humanity's last defender of Earth, but uh. Before that, I actually do want to go into a bit of a history lesson to explain how the series actually wound up getting made. So, because uh, it, it is actually a pretty fun and interesting story, and I do want to share it. But uh, and, all, and also, and also, there is a there, it, this this is going to be talking about the pilot a little bit. But uh, I'm not going to be reviewing the pilot for you guys because it is the same exact is is the same exact episode I'm going to be reviewing for you guys in a couple minutes, but with a longer time, but with a shorter time frame, and, and not as much of an animation budget. But uh, in any case, uh, in any case, the the origins of Megas XLR are actually kind of interesting, and in how this show actually got greenlit and made. And uh, what happened was is that uh, they, there was originally a show. Originally, the creative, the show's creators all got together to work on a show called Downtown, which uh, aired on MTV for a little bit before it only got a first. Before it only, but it only ever it really got a first season. So uh, unfortunately, it never got a second. Se it never really got a second season, and it kind of got canceled after one season, which. Uh, but it was enough to get the three, the show's three primary creators together, and uh, and uh, and after and after brainstorming their idea about how they wanted to create an animated series that kind of brought together everything they liked when they were kids, um, including incl obviously giant robots, but also a whole bunch of other slow stuff. They eventually got together and uh, and eventually created a, and, and eventually created a, an animated pilot for, in VHS form, which uh, they then handed to the to the to then executive Carol Siminski in the middle of Comic Con. Now, I should mention something. Don't do this. You will get blacklisted. This is a bad idea. Don't do that. But, uh, yeah, the only reason, yeah, and I should mention, the only reason this worked is because, uh, Carol Siminski and one of the show's creators, Jody Schaefer, were, uh, he, she taught, she taught him everything he knew and, uh, was actually his college professor in college. So, uh, and, and also, um, obviously, he, he had, he actually created Downtown before this. So of course everybody. So of course he had a he had a bit of a reputation going in already. So uh, so yeah, Carol kind of just gave him the gave him the show and uh, decided to actually put put it in Cartoon Network Summer Blockfest, which uh, was supposed to which, which was where they aired a bunch of uh, different pilots for a bunch of different shows and to uh, kind of determine which one would be, would be made into an animated se into a full animated series. And uh, of course, naturally, because Mega XLR is awesome. It managed to blow. It managed to blow everything else out of the water, much to Cartoon Network's chagrin, and it got made into a full series, which is where to, where the where the where the where the series where the series first episode Test Drive takes place. And uh, yeah, this and uh, and as I said, t Test Drive is the Test Drive is the is the name of both the pilot and the and Mega Sec and the first episode of Mega Sex LR. But and uh, the difference being is that the, is that is that the Mega Sex LR was originally called Lowbrow when it, when the pilot was made, so it's kind of interesting. But uh, in any case, but in any case, this but in case this episode starts off in 3012, which uh, where humanity is actually on its last legs. Um, as we find out, that humanity has actually been struggling in a battle in an on, in an uphill battle against the Glorf, an enemy and a race of have have cephalopod have cephalopod have have robot creatures that uh, have have effectively all but, all but wiped out humanity and uh, and and of course and because of that humanity is actually on on its last is on last legs and uh, are in desperate need of a victory to turn to turn their situation around and uh, it's at the it's at this point where we met Kiva Kiva Andrew who is uh who she is uh, so Kiva is kind of is is kind of interesting in that uh, she in the, in a normal series. She would be the main protagonist of the whole show. I should mention this. She would be absolutely be the main protagonist of the story, if the story was about her, which of course it isn't. So she kind of gets delegated to psychic duty like halfway through. But uh, in case, but in case this episode, but in case it opens up with her fight after fighting off some glorf in her own mech, which I am going to picture here because it's it does have its own unique little design. But uh, 
in any case, she after after finally fighting off some some glor some glor, she then proceeds to run by her, so that she then proceeds to discuss plans with her commander uh, while also evading the glor armada. And uh, what she point and what she states is that uh, she is that they actually needs to actually uh, find a, they needed to actually defend a pro a prototype that they actually stole from the glor called called Magus. Which of course is the is the titular robot of the main of the main series, and uh, and of and of course is the t is of course is the main robot that Coop and and, every, and Jamie and Kiva pilot around for, for the rest of the series. But uh, and of course she then proceeds to talk to her commander, pointing out that uh, that they need to actually get make it that they that she needs to make sure that they can get back to Magus and actually make sure that it, that's well defended. That's well defended because obviously the Glorf, as, as we find out, if the Glorf actually want it back because. Uh, the Glorf, because they, because apparently he, the humans stole actually stole it from the Glorf and have modified it, and uh, they're using it and are kind of using it as a as a prototype so that they can actually m potentially turn the tide against the Glorf. Um, meanwhile, the Glorf War Master Gorath, who is the main antagonist of the whole series, I should mention. He, I mean, he's not in every he's not in every episode. There are a couple of episodes where he's not exactly present, but uh, he is, he is the main antagonist. He's the main he's the guy he's the guy who kind of has. He's like the evil villain who who has complete and utter control over the overarching overarching story. But uh, in any case, in any case, the he, in any case, Gorath obviously wants it back and may, and 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 ver and and ver throughout various times throughout the, throughout this opening sequence makes many many requests of his commanders to get back to get the to get Magus back at all costs. And also wants it destroyed so that the humans can't actually just can't actually use it to fight back against him because obviously if it's kept around they'll just they'll just try and steal it again and uh, he doesn't want that he wants the white humans to be wiped out because uh, he's the bad guy of course he wants to be he of course he wants humanity to suffer but uh, but in case with that with that um the keep but in case with when they when they realize that keep that thing, she needs to actually get back to base and make sure that and make sure that the Glorf are unable to actually get to get to Megus um. She she then proceeds to head back to head back to base while several drones actually cover several other pilots actually cover her and uh, I should mention this is the, this is the standard mech that all the other that all the other pilots have it was it's just I pictured Kiva's mech but it, it, literally everybody drives one literally everybody and uh, and to be fair that's humanity's standardized mech that's the one they use for all of their missions and stuff like that so of course it's going to be the main one that they use and that's going to be their main design but. Uh, but in case she gets back to the back to Megus's hangar, where uh, where you actually see a pre a pre coop Megus, where uh, it's still uh, where, where it kind of looks like an inter it has a bit of an interesting de design where it has a really cool looking head and it has a cool looking paint job. But uh, yeah, but yeah, after arriving after arriving back, um, Kiva quickly realizes that uh, she need that 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 in order to get keep the glow from actually getting it, um, she needs to actually figure out a way to actually stop the glow from actually winning winning in the first place and. Uh, with that, much to her commander's chagrin, because they point out that uh, she does that they, that that she does, that she shouldn't be making some sort of some sort of. Uh, as we find out, this is this is completely this is completely untested. This is something that they haven't really figured out how to do before do yet. But uh, but Akiva actually decides that, that the best that the best course of action would be to actually send Ma to actually send Megus back in time to the Battle of the Last Stand, which, as we find out, was the but was the battle that would have absolutely tipped the skills and enabled the humans to actually beat the Glorf. And uh, well, and what we find out is that the reason she's sending it there is because she believes that if she send, if she goes inside, goes there with Magus and is able to actually turn human, turn everything around and stop the humanity from actually being wiped out by the Glorf, then they might have a fighting chance and the Glorf might not be might not be able to fight back. And uh, well, of course the command, well, of course her commander is skeptical about this whole idea, pointing out that pointing out that they are get once again they've complete they haven't tested this idea yet about being able to travel through time, and pointing out that uh, it could be very bad for her and she could wind up getting stuck in a temporal anomaly with no way out. Um, he does eventually realize that 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 the reward outweighs the risks and uh, and, and sends several of his several other ever other human soldiers to actually cover cover Kiva while she docks inside Megus and proceeds to travel through time and. Uh, of course, the Glorf immediately realizes that she's trying to that she's trying to dock, and uh, and Gorath even notes that uh, even put 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 some notice about the fact that they did redesigned his mech, and he's mm, obviously not particularly happy about that. But uh, but of course he but of course he and of course he immediately sends in his biggest weapon, the UMG, which we don't get to see clearly. Um, we just note that it's a giant robot, and uh, and of course and of course Kiva quickly realizes that they're not going to be able to fight back against it, and. Uh, and she's only got so much time before she can actually dock with dock with Megus, and uh, 
Sure enough, she does, and after setting off a temporal anomaly, which again, the Glorf all quickly notice, and, uh, and, and Gorath quickly realizes that they need to, quickly realizes that they need to pursue Megas through time in order to get it, which, uh, his, one of his commanders actually speaks up again, pointing out that, uh, there's a very good chance they could get stuck, and, uh, he winds up being right, but, uh, he does, but despite but despite the warnings, um, Gorath decides to push forward anyway and decides to start pointing out that he needs to retrieve Megas at all costs. And, uh, and sure enough, the Gorath then immediately, and of course, the Gorath and the Glorf then immediately, then immediately start, start sending all of their soldiers in to actually attack, to actually get, attack Megas. And, uh, eventually one of their attacks winds up landing because as Kiva's trying to dock through, through Megas's face, I guess, where the, where the, where the faceplate would be on both of the robots, she tries to dock, dock through it, but, uh, it's at this point. It's at this point where one of the Glor where one of the Glorf hits it with a giant mi with a giant missile, which blows up which blows up Megas's head, and he winds up going and it winds up going through the anomaly. And uh, Kiva winds up landing inside of her landing back inside of her mech, and uh, quickly discovers that uh, because of that, the because it actually got attacked before it could finish his warp. Um, it also this call actually caused caused the, the warp itself to become unstable, and uh, and the and the time and the time just fluxes completely out of control. She has no she has no idea where it's going or when. But uh, but of course, and of course, the, the, and of course, this immediately causes her to get transported through time, and uh, the and Gorath quickly realizing that they need to pursue the Megas through the uh, once again pursue Megas through the time stream before they can actually get to it. He immediately pilots them through, and, uh, and even despite once again his commander's uh, very obvious, very obvious, objectively right uh, complaints about the fact that they shouldn't really do that. Um, they do manage to shape. They, they do manage to chase Me to chase Megas through the, the through the time warp with a uh, a couple of, with a couple of his, with with his main ship. He, and he, and, he, and eventually they all just disappear through through space and time. And uh, then cut to the present day where we actually meet Coop, who is our who is our main protagonist of the series, and of course is our main is our main guy. And uh, he's the guy we're actually rooting to actually beat to actually beat everybody and and, defeat, and beat the beat the villains, which uh. Yeah, it's good. It's good for us, except for the fact that Coop is just kind of a well. He's a jackass. He's a he's your typical he's your typical human human person. He's not particularly uh, he's not particularly heroic, as he later admits in the episode. But uh, but in case is uh, but in case of that we are then first introduced to Coop, and uh, and we're also introduced to Jamie, who uh, is Coop's best friend, and as we find out, he's not a very good person. And uh, I kind of alluded to that in my tri in my preview vi in my preview viewers video where I called him a shit stain of a human being, and I'm not wrong about that. There are a there are a couple of things he says in this that are there's a couple of things he says and things in this that are objectively kind of terrible. Not not gonna lie, he's kind of a bad person. But uh, yeah, it ain't, but yeah, no, but but any any case, as I'm, get I'm getting sidetracked, Coop actually invites Jamie over to his garage, and uh, and Jamie of course wants to know what exactly it is Coop was so excited to show him, and. Uh, and, and it's, it's at this point where Coop then gestures to a to a 1906 to 1968 um, Plymouth Barracuda with a flame with a flame paint paint job on it, and uh, and of course this and of course this actually causes uh causes Jamie to kind of roll his eyes, one, pointing out that uh, it isn't all that impressive, pointing out that it is indeed a nice car, but uh, it isn't really the knock your socks off thing that Coop seems like he was making it out to be. At which point Coop then reaches over and pulls a lever pulls a lever on the wall of his of a wall of his mom's garage, and. Uh, and then the garage completely explodes, explodes to reveal Megas to reveal Megas now in the present day. Which, uh, yeah, and and, and, of, and of course Jamie immediately points out that his mom is very much going to kill him. And uh, and 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 Coop, and Coop doesn't really deny that. But uh, after piling in, they then proceed. Coop then proceeds to point out all of the different features that that Megas has. Some of which he admits he's not entirely sure what they do. He he, he openly admits that he doesn't fully understand what they do. But uh. But of course, then Jamie then points at, then asks Coop where exactly it is he got this thing, and uh, and of course Coop then proceeds to point out that he was actually hanging out in goat in goats in goats um and when we find and when we find out is we actually meet a guy named Goat who uh I should mention is nickname is named after um voiced by and based on a guy named Scott Reinecker who uh is, who who is actually named Goat who is actually named Goat um and has his nickname and uh. And, and I should mention something interesting about Goat here is that uh, Goat, the character, is actually the impli heavily implied to be the same character from downtown. It's heavily implied that they're the same person, and uh, or rather, it is indeed the same character. And he just made the transition from from uh, from downtown to Megas XLR. And uh, the the main difference between between his appearance in Meg in this show and downtown 
is uh, they just kind of took away his lollipop. They took away his cigarettes and gave him a lollipop. That's it. That's all they really did. They four kids them up and put it and pop plopped them in a kid anime and kids show. That's all they really did. But uh, but in case what we find out is that uh, Koopa is actually picking through picking through a pile of garbage and uh, and uh, and and at uh, at uh, at, uh, at goat some shop at goat some garage or, or rather at goat some junkyard and. Uh, Go and go and while and while he's doing that, Goat is actually sitting in a recline in a recliner on top of a pile of trash and uh and go and and then he asks Koopa who would win the fight between Godzilla and the Loch Ness monster and or rather rather between Bigfoot and the Loch Ness monster and uh Koopa puts picks the very obvious choice of Bigfoot because uh obvious because he think because Wally point because Wolf Goat does point out that uh that the bit that uh that, uh, that uh, the Loch Nessie has like several hundred pounds on Bigfoot. Bigfoot is fast, and to, and to be pointing out that to this day nobody has actually been able to take his picture, and uh, and of course the two were kind of butt up uh, heads a little bit, but uh, it's at this point where Coop realizes that uh, nobody that nobody that nobody has actually gone through gone through the trash gone through the trash in a long time, and uh, sure enough, and sure enough, Goat admits that, pointing out that uh, the trash pile had been there since as long as he could remember, um, even even before he actually owned the junk on the junkyard, and. Uh, and of course, Coop then questions well, how he hasn't actually gone through it yet. But uh, and uh, it's at this point, it's, it ends at this point where Goat kind of makes it seem like he's a busy person who doesn't, who uh, kind of goes out and socializes a lot. Even though Coop points out that that's complete bullshit and points out that he never actually leaves the junkyard, which uh, which Goat kind of sheepishly denies. But uh, but to this point where Coop actually starts looting through the trap looting through the trash pile and uh and keep and keeps asking and keeps asking Goat what about the various things that he finds and uh. Goat keeps telling him it's two bucks for everything. He points out that uh, anything he finds is is worth two bucks because he eventually gets annoyed with Goop asking him all the time. But also points out that he doubts he'll find anything that's worth even even close to two bucks. But uh, but of course Coop, Coop does eventually get lucky and winds up pulling it and winds up pulling a piece of uh, pulling a piece of trash that causes the entire pile to collapse. And uh, he finds up finding Angus underneath it, which. Uh, <laughs> which of course, which of course, Scott didn't know. Scott Ryan, Scott didn't know. I, I'm gonna just interchangeably call him Scott and Goat throughout all this. Just, just by the way, because again, that's his first name. And, and that's his first name. Both of us in real, in real life as a person, and as well as, and as well as his, vo to real, his voice in the show. In the show, that's his actual name. His name is Scott Reinecker. His nickname is Goat, and he is just based on the, based on the voice actor of the same name. But which is funny. But. uh but in case Goat has, uh, admittedly has no idea where that where Megus actually came from, and uh, and, and it's at this point where where Coop realizes that realizing that it's only two bucks to sex, he'll take it, much to Goat's chagrin. So yeah, chagr so yeah, Goat didn't know that Megus was in there, and of course when Goat when he when he when he finally sees it, he realizes yeah, I probably should have charged more than two bucks. But uh, in any case, with with Goat's help, Meg um, Coop then proceeds to actually repair repair up Megus. And uh, proceed, and also adding XLR to its name, and uh, and then proceed, and, and then proceed, and then Coop then proceeds to explain to Jamie that they had that because there was so much damage done to Megus, he had to actually fix a lot of the robot himself. He points out there's a lot of things wrong. There were a lot of things wrong with Megus that he had to fix, and uh, and of course, and of course, one of the thing, one of the main things is that uh, he couldn't decide on a, what what car to use for the head, and uh, it was actually through Goat's through Goat's input that he actually eventually. Figure, figure out that the best hit that, that to pick a 1968 Purple Plymouth Barracuda for for Megus's head, which uh, which actually kind of works and it is kind of iconic. And but uh, and, and we do get a couple of what ifs where we where we're seeing uh, both of both the Volkswagen Beetle, which doesn't work, and uh, and another car that I don't fully, that I don't recognize, which again doesn't work. But uh, it is it is interesting that we kind of saw a couple of what ifs where Megus had different different vehicles for his head for his head before they eventually landed on the on the Barracuda, which uh. Of course, it's, which of course is kind of awesome, but because obviously, and obviously, and obviously, my fam my family loves Barracuda. Is actually my my dad is actually in a uh, he's in a he's in a he's in a Facebook group where 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 he uh, where he talks to other Barracuda owners and uh, kind of exchanges information about that kind of stuff, and it's kind of cool. And uh, we can and personally, my family owns like two or three of them, so. Yeah, we do. We like bar we like pulling with barracudas in our in our in our house. It's a, it's a very it's very neat. But uh, but in case this it, but in case it, yeah, after after eventually fixing it up, um, Coop Coop um the, the Coop then admits that then admits that now that that once he fixed it all up, now it was only a matter of actually test driving it. And uh, sure enough, and sure enough, what Coop, and sure enough after modifying it, Coop has actually modified it with all of his video game stuff as well. Um, he has he has 
video he has he has various consoles and controllers and a whole bunch of other things either slapped either slapped and duct taped to the car to the to the to the car and the wheel or just built into built into the dashboard which is kind of cool and kind of neat but uh but of course but of course um jamie then, then then realizing that they now have a giant robot begins to wonder what exactly it is they can do with it and uh and they and and coop also wonders what they could do with it and they both start fantasizing um Coop of course, Coop of course imagines them slacking up, slacking him, him just going around with it, watching, watching pro wrestling fights, stealing hamburgers, you know, chasing after ice cream trucks, and a whole bunch of other things. Whereas uh, Jamie's in flashback, which occurs prior, is the same thing as Coop's, but a lot more sinister. Where uh, he breaks in, where he breaks in, steals money, chases after, chases after women, and uh, and forces that, and forces them to fight one another, and uh, and he just rules over, and just rule over town like a king, which uh, yeah. I should mention once again. I should mention Jamie is a terrible person. That is just it. And uh, sure enough, and, for, and sure enough, it's funny because it, it, obviously, it, obviously, it's so cartoonishly evil that of course nobody is ever, ever going to going to want to be his friend. But uh, in a cartoon, it works. Everybody know. Everybody know. Everybody's able to laugh along with the asshole. It's fun. But uh, but yeah. In any case, as, as they quit, as they start for, as, but in any case, um, Jamie then realizes that. Then, then, st then points out that they need to actually get into a tr test drive as well, and uh, and then uh, and then asks Scoop if he knows what if, what any, if if he knows how to even pilot pilot it, and uh, and of course Scoop then proceeds to actually press a button press a button which uh which actually causes them to uh to set off what what what, what the wiki actually refers to as a pixelator gun, which uh zaps a nearby house and just causes it to dissolve into pixels, which uh Coop didn't realize that that was a thing that could work, but uh. Eventually, Jamie realizes that Coop doesn't really know what he's doing and tries to wrestle wrestle Magus' control away from him. When, uh, which actually winds up setting off the car alarms, funnily enough. And uh, sure, and sure enough, they actually start fighting over it. But uh, they don't fully understand what it actually is. They did and don't know how to shut it off. But uh, eventually, Kiva shows up through the through the wormhole and proceeds to shut it off because she has the key, which is what which, which of course makes sense obviously it's kiva's it's it used to be kiva's robot of course she's going to have the key for it but uh but in case uh, they then point out that that's actually kind of that they actually point out that that, that her robot is kind of awesome at which point uh kiva at which point kiva reveal, reveals herself through the monitor on coop on coop's dashboard and uh proceed and kind of proceeds to explain why it what it is that she's there for but and uh sure enough she and sure enough she shows up with two drone two drones who also come, come to help her and uh what she explains to what she explains to Coop is that uh, she basically just she just basically just explains who she is and where she came from and uh, what's going on and uh, and sure enough she then proceeds she also just proceeds to explain how Megas is actually a, is actually a robot from the future and uh, and and well Coop and Coop obviously doesn't get any of this he doesn't fully understand what it is she's talking about he just thinks she's crazy but uh, he but she then proceeds to point out exactly what it, what we were shown in the in the opening sequence that. Uh, Megus was this, Megus was built with it, or rather was modified with the intent of stop of going back to, in time to a to a place where they could actually beat the Glorfed and win and be, and save humanity from them. And uh, and what we find out is that it was actually sent to 2004 by mistake. So uh, yeah, because and of course that it was sent to 2004 by mistake. It was supposed to be sent be like two years two years prior to where to 20 to to, to 2012, but. Uh, why not being sent to 2000 store in, in four instead because it got shot by a missile and and was sent the and sent its time drive out, out completely out of out of sync. But uh, but okay. But in case you, but in case well, when Coop when it quickly becomes apparent that all that that entire explanation just completely sailed over Coop's head. Um, she then points out that uh, that she'll make it simple and that uh, it's her robot and she wants it back. But he also points out finders keepers and uh, and she but then she points out but then she kind of angrily points out that. Uh, that she that she wants to, that she needs the robot because it was designed to, to save humanity and points out that it wasn't designed to actually be driven around by coop driven around by a by a primitive by a primitive ape and her pet and his pet monkey thing which of course jamie immediately takes offense to and tells coop and tells coop to actually pummel her and uh and in the process the two actually start fighting it fighting it out over the over over megas's controls again and uh wind up accidentally hitting one of the one of the one of her drones in the face which uh, causes it to, col to collapse and fall over and uh and of course, and of course, the, and of course, of course, Coop then remarks that uh, that that he didn't mean to do that, but that was cool. And wonders if he can figure out how to do it again. And uh, and of course, and of course, Kiva quickly realizes that uh, 
She needs to fit that she that they're going to need to fit that there's that that clearly that clearly Coop is in no in no position to negotiate and uh is prepared and is prepared to fight him. But uh but also quickly point but and of course but it also quickly points out that uh, of course they don't need to fight and that all she really wants is a robot back. But uh Coop then proceeds to point out that she was the one who started it, even though Jamie quickly points out that was not the case. And uh and and with the, and with that and then proceeds to actually shoot shoot a missile at, shoot a missile at, uh, at Kiva who uh, actually manages to block her with her mech but uh, it, it hits a nearby bailing and that lands on top of her instead which kind of damages her mech but doesn't take it down but uh, and of course and of course Coop thinks she's down for the count and starts brushing brushing away brushing the dust off his hands but uh, then she gets back up and uh, once again asks him to get to give her to give her magus and uh, points out that she's not leaving that she's not leaving without it and uh, then runs in for a charge but. Uh, which at this point where Coop then realizes that he needs to actually figure that he needs to actually stop Kiva and uh, then wonders where First Gear is, which uh, of course he doesn't know where. For, he, which of course he does. It, it's in the song. He doesn't know where First Gear is because that is one of the lyrics in the song in the song that uh, that, uh, that airs in the at the beginning of the episodes. But uh, he then, but he, in the process he accidentally he actually winds up putting her putting her into a suplex and actually winds up de defeating a robot that way, which uh, does wind up just which does wind up finally taking it down and. Uh, while Kiva is visibly annoyed about the fact that Coop destroyed a robot, he also he also is impressed with his she also is impressed with his piloting skills and wonders how we actually wound up becoming a really good pilot. And uh, what we found out what we find out is that there's a very good reason Coop actually modified all of the Megas with all of his uh, game controllers with all of his own game controllers and game consoles and stuff. As it turns out, and what we and what's revealed through a flat through a flashback slash montage, Coop from a very early age has been playing video games. And what we find out is that because of that, he's actually gotten really, really good at beating them. So, uh, yeah, eventually, and, event, and, that, and, it, and also, and, and that at some point during that, he actually wound up being Jamie, who played with games with him for a bit before realizing that he wasn't as good as Coop and, and decided it was much better to actually just watch him instead. And, uh, yeah, what we find out is that Coop eventually got so good at video games that he could just beat him with his eyes shut. So, and, uh, but uh, as he's actually explaining all that to Kiva and, uh, and actually kind of daydreaming a little bit, um, Jamie tells him that Coop, that, that um, Kiva's actually trying to steal his ride, and uh, sure enough, he turns and sure enough, Coop snaps out of it long enough to realize that she's trying to swipe, to trying to swipe Megas. But uh, but what we quickly find out is that because of what Coop did, because he modified it with a Plymouth Barracuda and all of his game console stuff, she is no longer able to pilot it. She it is now so th so thoroughly customized that she can no longer control it, and. Uh, and then proceeds, and then wonders out loud what out loud what Coop actually did to her ride to her robot, and uh, at which point Coop, at which point Coop and Jamie then proceed to slip in, into the into the driver and passenger seat, and uh, and Coop corrects her, pointing out that it's his giant robot now, and uh, and point and points out that and and of course and of course uh, and of course uh, Kiva then points out that uh, obviously she is in no position to actually save humanity from the dwarf now because now she's no longer able to actually control the robot, and. Uh, what we actually found out, it find out is that uh, is that is that there was actually supposed to be, a, and of course the time drive, the time flux unit was supposed to be in the in the dashboard, but she notices that it's notably noticeably missing, and uh, and and Coop kind of lies to her about what happened to it, pointing out that he couldn't fix it, but uh, in actuality he didn't know what it did, and he smashed it to pieces with goat with goat's input. So uh, yeah, he wound he wound up just smashing it. So, so yeah, he wound up smashing it into pieces, and uh, Kiva kind of dejectedly points out that. Uh, that, that that's kind of a problem because now it means she is stuck in the past with Coop and Jamie. So yeah, because of that, she's now no longer able to get back to the future unless they repair that tribe drive unit. And uh, and she quickly realizes that that's going to be a problem because obviously Coop Megus was the last last chance of, of humanity getting saved. And uh, she might said that now without it, they're not going to be able to go back to the Battle of the Last Stand and stop the the Glore from from defending from defeating humanity. And uh, and of course, and of course, Jamie points out that uh, since obviously she so that since obviously since since that and since he points out that uh, they beat her that he that she they beat her so thoroughly that she should just let Coop do it. But uh, with which Coop with Coop correcting him, pointing out that uh, obviously Coop did all the work. And uh, this is the first time he corrects him, but uh, this is the first time I'm remembering off the top of the head. But that he corrects him, but uh, yeah, Coop points out that uh, yeah he did all the work. But. Uh, then Kiva actually has a bit of a brainstorm and realizes that she can figure out a way to actually save humanity. And uh, then proceeds to point out that uh, obviously, since Coop is the only one who can drive Megas now, he points out that uh, that she points out that for better or for worse, he is humanity's hero and that and that it is and it is his destiny to one day save the world from the Glorfed. And uh, 
points out in the top for that for the time being, she's more than willing to train him and is more than willing to help him to help him figure out strategies and stuff so that he can actually fight back against the dwarf Dormana and, and anything else that comes to that comes to take us take a crack at him. And uh and point and but uh but of course Coop points out that uh that that that, that, that actually is a, is a bit of a conflict of interest because as he points out Oh, he's not, he's not some humanity's hero. He's just some dude from New Jersey who, who, ha, who lucked across a, across a giant mecha one day and decided to modify it. He is not, a, he is not a hero. He, and he openly admits that, uh, all he really wants to do is cruise, is cruise around, maybe, and cruise around, eat some, eat, eat what foods, eat the things he likes, and, uh, and battles and baddies and maybe pick up some chicks with, uh, Jamie adding in a rather humorous montage because this is the name of the OP. That chicks dig giant robots, and it's and it is a really fun. It's just a really funny title gag where it's like, yeah, chicks do dig giant robots. Name of the song, really funny. But uh, but in case, but in case, but in case um, Coop also points out that uh, that, that that obviously Kiva doesn't fully know what she, what she's talking about anyway, pointing out that uh, obviously since Coop was the one who modified it and and, and designed it, he knows Coop, he knows Mega Sex Lore like it's the back of his hand, and uh. And the process winds up pressing a button that he's actually not supposed to be pressing. And uh, what we find out is that, uh, th and that what Coop, the button, thanks to Kiva, what, what we find out is that what Coop, Coop actually pressed is actually called a tachyon beacon, which, uh, which, uh, which, as she just explains, is just a way for the, which just means that the Glorf is now able to track them throughout throughout time and space, basically, because Coop, because Coop just accidentally lead himself into a button, he wound up setting it off and wound up controlling it and wound up summoning the Glorf Armada, which, uh, of course, and of course, Jamie immediately asks asks Kiva if the if the Glorf are these big ugly green green things with snot colored robots and. Uh, and Kiva, and Kiva does indeed point out that that's exactly what, what they are, and uh, asks how Jamie knows that. And uh, and of course, Jamie then immediately points through the windshield and points out that the Glorf are here. And uh, sure enough, the Glorf just show up with their main ship and an, an entire armada of robots, which uh, all look the same. I'm just going to picture one, maybe one of them, if there is indeed a picture of them, because the wiki is somewhat incomplete. But uh, yeah, they, but in case the robots all then proceed to pile, to pile out of the Glorf armada and show up and uh, proceed to a surround Megas and. Uh, it's at this point where Gorath actually contacts contacts uh, contacts Coop through his monitor and uh, proceeds to point and proceeds to tell me, and proceeds to tell him to hand over to hand over those the stolen time the stolen um, prototype unit, pointing out that uh, that now that, that now that they that, now that they're there he's going to take it back and they're going to use overwhelming force to get it back if Coop does it doesn't and uh, and Coop immediately refuses and Coop immediately refuses pointing out that uh, of course that of course it's his giant robot and he's not going to give it over over to anybody but. Uh, Kiva then proceeds to point out that uh, the odds are horribly stacked against them because of how many giant robots the, the Glorf have brought with them, and uh, and of course Coop then, then points out that it is a little bit unfair, and then proceeds to actually smash the giant, to smash one of Ki the other one of Kiva's drones that was standing next to him, and then proceeds to point out that now it's a fair fight, and uh, then proceeds to go into one of his iconic trash talks. So yeah, I should mention this um, at the end of every episode. Uh, or rather, at the end of every episode, before the main big fight against the big bad, Coop will, in, in lieu of coming up with a strategy where he where he kind of tries to figure out a way to actually take down take down his enemies and uh, and, and try to figure out a way to actually fight back against the giant robots that are trying that are currently trying to attack him, Coop will just insult them openly to their face and then proceeds to tell and then proceeds to kind of uh just kind of go on a, on a rant about what they did to piss him off specifically before winning through dumb luck and. Uh, and of course, and of course, the, and of course, the, the, this is the first of his trash talks. But uh, so he doesn't really have any particular reason to be, go off against the Glorf now. Glorf, uh, but he does point out that uh, they're in his town and nobody gets to wreck it except for him. And uh, then proceeds to wonder where first gear is and winds up setting off one of Megas's missiles. And uh, this winds up hitting a satellite for for Pop TV, um, which which blows up after going on a ramp a rant a thing about how it uh, because of that new satellite they're now able to actually. Go off again. So they're now able to broadcast into every home worldwide before it why, proceeds to get blown up. And uh, again, sure, this is an in, this is a bit of an inside joke, and I should explain this. Um, so I've already talked about Down Town, and I got canceled after one season. And uh, the creators of the of Mega Sex Lore weren't too happy about the fact that Down Town got shut down. So yeah, and this is just a running running targeted joke toward, toward um, MTV, where. Uh, 
Where every so, where every single time, where every sing, where like every time without fail, whenever pop, whenever pop TV, the MTV spoof slash stand-in for me, for MTV shows up, they will just relentlessly destroy it on screen in the middle of an episode. And it is the great, it is one of the funniest, funniest petty gags in the entire series. And uh, and I am, and I, and this also does open up the door because uh, anybody who knows of, who knows about the series and is and is very much familiar with the series will know that. Uh, the, the, I, once again, I pointed out, Cartoon Network kind of screwed this over back in the day, and uh, and, I, and I can only imagine when and if this show comes back that they are going to have a few choice words to say about their former their former network. So yeah, that, so yeah, that's just going to be a precursor for what's to come whenever the show gets rebooted, if it gets rebooted, and uh, maybe it may not, may not. It's the it's a bit iffy, and I'll get in, get to that in like the final episode or, or so when I go and review that, but. Uh, Buggies after after immediately smashing up smashing up the uh, plant after smashing up the pop TDP satellite Coop then immediately switches into battle mode and uh, and, 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 and and I should mention he just effortlessly just really destroys all the all the Glorf's robots he he as I mentioned through dumb luck he just manages to destroy all of them and win and uh, and sure enough he doesn't fully understand what some of it some of his controls do as we've established but uh he doesn't really need to do that to kick butt because obviously he knows a couple of wrestling moves and also he's kind of thoroughly customized it to the point where he can, he himself is able to control it even if he doesn't know what all of the buttons do so uh of course he manages to actually beat most of the glorfs single-handedly which uh which also winds up destroying most of jersey city which is where coop I, I haven't talked about this yet but uh, he lives in jersey city he accidentally destroys he actually he and actually this is a recurring thing where even though he fights the bad guys most of the damage in the show is coop's fault he will actually destroy any surrounding any surrounding areas that he happens to be in by accident of course he doesn't mean to but uh he does wind he does wind up causing more damage than the than the bad guys a lot of the time so uh yeah, he saves human he saves the good of day, but at what cost? But uh Yeah, in any case with that with that, Meg Coop is now very happy about the fact that he's actually that he's actually defeated them, pointing out that uh the Glorf weren't actually so tough and uh and also after seeing this entire display where Coop just defeated them through dumb luck and, and uh through ran through very weird weird very weird and unconventional strategies, um Coop then Coop, Coop, Coop then points out that uh that she takes back everything she said about Coop being the last, the last strand of the last savior of humanity, and uh, vo and volunteers to drive. Though Coop just kind of ignores her and, and adjusts his back mirror. Um, at which point, at which point they then proceed to get no. The, the, um, the Coop, the, Coop and uh, Goroth then proceed to sh face off with uh, Goroth pointing out that pointing out that Coop has put up a really valiant fi valiant fight thus far and, and admires his strategy, but uh, which of course Coop had none. But uh, Coop, but Goroth doesn't know that. But uh, and then proceeds to point out that uh, now that he's in, but and that now he's well, that now that he now he's more than prepared to take out Coop himself. And uh, with that, then proceeds to press a button on his on his own personal mech, which uh, winds up turning into a giant spider robot. I should mention. And uh, and with that, Coop and with that, Coop then proceeds to get ready to throw down with it and uh, and fight and fight Gorath. And uh, the two do exchange a couple of blows and wind up defeat and wind up punching each other a couple of times. But. Uh, well, of course, Gorath is able to knock to knock to knock Coop around a couple of times. Coop is also equally able to knock Gorath around a couple of times, and uh, eventually gets to a stalemate. And uh, Gorath quickly realizes that what he's doing isn't working, so he decides to once again summon the UMG. Which, uh, as we find out, and as we find out through through a transformation sequence, isn't actually a robot. It's actually a giant con 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 conglomerate of robots. It's actually a giant. It's actually a giant connected transformation of robots that all come together to form one really big one, and uh, and of course Gorath is obviously the main head of the robot, which uh, which but of course once it's finally been put together and is and is it easily towers over Megus and uh, and, Coop, and and at which point Kuva then Kiva then proceeds to point out that uh, Coop stands no chance against it, pointing out that she fought it before and that uh, it has no weakness and there's no way for Coop to actually beat it, but. Uh, Coop then points out that she that that's probably why they lost because with that at with that attitude there's no there's no t there's a very obvious reason why they weren't able to win but uh but in case but in case with that Gor Gorath then proceeds to mock Coop over his intercom again and uh proceeds to point out that now that the UMG stands before him Coop Coop is now no longer able to stand against him and that uh he, and that he and that human scum and that he his he and his human scum friends are no longer able to actually be able to beat him but uh. It's at this point where Coop then proceeds to to point out that uh, they actually have a saying: where, "Where the bigger they are, the harder they fall." But uh, of course, as he's in the middle of saying that, the the UMG just kind of 
flicks him with one finger and sends him through several buildings, which, which uh, causes which causes me, which causes him to actually fall to the back seat to the back seat. And uh, Kuba has to grab the steering wheel to pull himself back into the back into his front seat again. And uh, but of course, with that, but of course, it, it is it does quickly become apparent that Gorath isn't that Gorath wasn't lying. He, um, Koopa stands literally no chance against it because it is way too big and way too powerful. And uh, and sure enough, it actually winds up scooping up Magus and is prepared to actually defeat him and put and and, and crush him with, with its hands. But uh, then, and this is where the where the pure luck actually winds up coming in. The 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 Pop TV satellite that got shot with a missile earlier winds up landing on top of the UMG and winds up taking it down. And, uh, and with that, Koopa is able to effortlessly knock it over and, and destroy it. Which, uh, and which, of course, which of course winds up being a really funny, really funny sequence where it's like, Hey, this little, you know this, remember this joke? Yeah, it wound up being important in the episode. And I, and I do kind of like the, when the, when the jokes actually play a, play a narrative, uh, narrative I've talked about this before, uh, with, uh, with, uh, what is it, Assassination Classroom, but, uh, obviously, this is, the, this, this, this show is obviously a lot of jokes. So, uh. So of course Koopa is able to actually just bring it down through pure luck because he shot a satellite at the beginning of the fight, which he didn't mean to do, but it wound up working out anyway. So yeah, there we go. But uh, in any case, with the, now with the, but in any case now with the machine, now with uh, the UMG down for the count, um, Gorath and the rest of his men then then proceed to retreat back into their main back into their main ship, and and uh, with Gor with Gorath pointing out that uh, that Koopa put up a valiant fight, and but uh, points out that uh, he may, that the fight isn't over, and he will eventually get his get his robot back before leaving in his giant in his giant, in his ship and disappearing. With uh, but and at, at which point Gorath then proceeds to ask his 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 Glorf to commander to actually start to start to start a course back through time, back through space time, back to the rest of the Armada, so they can regroup. But uh, but of course, as was explained earlier, and Gorath wasn't listening, they can't go back. They are now stuck in the present and are unable to return because they went through the time hole. So, uh, yeah, because of that, they're no longer able to return, able to return and get back to the rest of their forces. And uh, and, and Gorath quickly realizes that this is that this doesn't need pose a problem. And uh, realizing he's most likely going to need Vegas and its time unit to get back to the present, that back to the future, then points out that uh, now, of course, he's going to need to actually. That of course, they're actually going to need to capture it at all costs. But uh, in the meantime, so tells the, tells his commander to, to to go to null space, go back to null space, so that they can make preparations under uninterrupted and do repairs. But uh, which uh, the, and of course, the Glorf commander immediately speaks out of turn and uh, point, and kind of mo and kind of mo mocks um Gorath a little bit, pointing out that they got their ass, that their ass handed to them, despite having many more robots and coops. And uh, they point. He does point. He does kind of comically point out that. Uh, of course, the Gor the Glorf are the Glorf were unable to actually fight back against a singular opponent, and uh, points out that they're, that they're going back to lick their wounds, as it were. But uh, then he realizes that he actually was speaking out of turn, and uh, Gorath reprimands him, telling him that uh, if he says something like that again, he'll put him he'll put him in the in the fr he'll leave, have him lead the charge against against Coop against Coop and, and uh, his team without a mech, and proceed and then proceeds to go back to his to his command room to prepare, to make preparations for next time, and. Uh, Meanwhile, Koop is very happy about the fact that he managed to win against the uh, huma against huma against uh, the Glorfs, and uh, decide and they and points out that he would like to go out and celebrate with some burgers. And uh, and uh, and well, 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 uh, well, Jamie then proceeds to point out that uh, of course that that of course she, he's still very much miffed about the fact that Kiva called him a pet monkey thing, and uh, Kiva just remarks that she should have stayed in the future. And that's where the episode ends. <laughs> but and, uh, and I should mention the episode actually ends in the in the. Uh, in the uh, what is it? The credits where uh, they actually do wind up going through a drive-through and getting some burgers, which uh, is kind of funny. But uh, yeah, I should make, yeah. But in any case, that's the first episode of Mega Sex Lore, and I do kind of like it. It is kind of funny, it is kind of unique, and it is kind of neat. So uh, yeah, it just sets up all the things that this series does well. Namely, that uh, Coop beats his beats his opponents using wrestling moves, gaming logic, and a bit of dumb luck, which is kind of cool. And but uh. And also, and also, admittedly, he doesn't know what all of his well, all of Mangus's weapons do. So, uh, yeah, that's a bit. Of, that's where he actually has to start learning and actually have to figure out all of the different things that he needs to learn. But, uh, yeah, of course, he winds up destroying. Yeah, of course, and of course, and again, he winds up destroying all the things, all of the things, and winds up destroying his surroundings. And then also, he destroyed a pop TV satellite because screw MTV and screw down and screw them for canceling downtown. But uh, and. Uh, yeah, this episode just kind of, and also it's just kind of funny about the whole juxtaposition where it starts off as this serious thing where uh, humanity's on its last stand and it must be and it must defeat the Glorf at all costs and it's like 
No, it's some jackass from New Jersey screwing around with a giant robot. That's pretty much the whole premise that you need. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's fun. But yeah, this episode, but yeah, again, the series is very fun. This first episode does a really good job of setting up what the rest of the series is going to be like because uh, it points out that the show isn't going to take itself too seriously. And uh, of course, if it did, that would be that would be kind of counterproductive. But uh, I mean, considering that this is that this is the kind of show that doesn't really take itself too seriously all that often. There is a quote unquote plot. But uh, for the most part, that plot just kind of goes to the wayside, and they just kind of, and it's just kind of about uh, two friend, two friends, and their and their and their guide from the future, just kind of screwing around, being whatever, beating whatever shows up in New Jersey, and uh, just kind of taking, just kind of taking them down, what, taking them down a bag or two when they do, when they do show up to try and take over. But uh, in case, yeah, this episode, but in case, yeah, that episode, that's the that is my review for Mangus X Lore. Thank you guys so much for watching this first this first review. If you enjoyed, be sure to comment and subscribe and a whole bunch of and all the other things that you know to do because you've been on YouTube before. You know how this works. And uh, yeah, be, also be sure to check out my uh, Patreon, my Patreon down in the description below as well if you want to help support the show and specifically Mangus Month and whatever other programs that I decide to do in the future. Because this is, of course, my second one of these. I would like to make this possibly a yearly thing. I've, I've already kind of made it a yearly thing at this point, but I would like to make more of those. And, I, and of course, if you have any suggestions for more of these that you would like for me to do in the future, then by all means, once again, let, let me know in the comments if you want to see another show I would, that, would like to, that you'd like to be covered in this format. And, uh, and of course, I'm going to be continuing to doing this for the rest of the month. You guys, you guys will be seeing more and more Megas throughout the rest of the month, and also whatever games I decide to play alongside that. Don't you worry. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, in case, yeah, and th thank you guys so much for watching. And, and and thank you. And also, just be sure to check out the videos linked in the end screen as well. Uh, the top video is the most recent one. It may or may not be this one. It will probably be a previous episode of Megas XLR in Megas Month. But whereas the bottom video, I think I still have set to Courage Month. So. Uh, once again, if you want to check that out, by all means, go link, go check that out. Link is down. The, once again, link is on the end screen. If you want to see the previous one of these, that is the best place to do that. Just go check that out. Link is, link is in the end screen. Just watch the playlist. Um, on your own, on, on your own time, of course. There's a lot of content in that one. So, and of course, there's a month worth of content in that one. So, if you want to see all the reviews and watch all the streams and all the other things that I did, again, playlist is there. You don't have to watch it, but but it, it's not essential watching to do so. But uh, if you want to, it's there. But uh, in any case, thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!